Hey guys, Kirkaster here, and today I want to try to answer a pretty important question that people have had about NGS. Uh, this has been a question since the launch of the game. It is whether or not hybrid builds are, you know, worth doing or are viable. What I mean by this hybrid build is a build that uses multiple potency types. So in NGS, there's melee, ranged, and tech. So a hybrid build is going to use two of these or even all three of these at once. So the way I wanted to make the comparison today was by taking all of the best in slot augments with Belgrin armor and Kazar weapons to see how a single potency stacks up next to a dual potency or even just for fun an all potency build. But that is enough of an introduction. Let's actually get into the numbers of the calculations here. So this is the one potency build. That's what we're going to be doing first. Um, I'm using the damage sheet average damage comparison between like all the weapons by Riatsu and uh, the six and seven stars were added by Icy Pie, which is important since we're using the Kzar today. Um, basically all these numbers, you can kind of just ignore from now, the most important things are down here. This is where all the augments are for the weapon and each of your units. And this shows that I'm using the Kzar weapon. And then this is the most important number. This is the average damage that it will be outputting. So here I labeled out all of the augments that I'm using in this one potency build to get the most DPS. So I'm using a Soul 3 or Giga 3, kind of up to you, that gives 2.5% potency. Uh, so Credit 3, which gives 2% potency and 2% floor. A Mastery 4, which gives 2.5% of each. An Addy Deft, which gives 2.5% of each. And a Deft, like, you know, might, tech, or range based on what you're going to be using. And that gives 2% each as well. But if you're unsure on what these augments are, or where they come from, I'll put a link down in the description below that shows all of these augments and the rest in the game from Arx Visiphone. But these augments should give you the highest average damage number as shown here. Uh, this also includes the Belgrin unit's 2.75% potency, which all this in total gives 70.9% potency, but with a variance of 71.4% to 100%, or this is kind of like your range of damage. So yeah, this is the one potency build kind of min maxed out. But just keep in mind, this is including the main weapon 10% damage bonus, if you guys did not know about that. So if I used a subclass weapon, but with the same potency type, you would actually see a number like this. So say I was playing a fighter with daggers, then like with daggers, I would see the 226. But then if I was using a katana, but still maining fighter, then you would see a damage number like this. So as you can see there, that's a 20 like damage difference. This becomes way more important when it comes to hybrid builds because you're more likely going to be switching between multiple classes weapons. Yeah, let's actually take a look at what the dual potency or hybrid build looks like in terms of damage numbers. So this is actually 217 damage. So it's actually better than like the non-main weapon one potency, but it's kind of like 10 off. So it's kind of like in the middle. Um, but the augments that a hybrid build uses for dual potency uh, is still a Soul 3, Giga 3, Credit 3, Mastery 4, an Addy Deft on their weapon, and a Deft Basic on their weapon. The reason why I say on the weapon only is because these Addy Defts and Deft like Basics only apply to one potency type. So if you're using one weapon like Katana and the other is Bow, they have two different types, but you can equip different augments on one of them and then the other. So in this situation, we're not actually multi-weaponing these weapons together, but keeping them separate, but using them on different weapon palettes. The reason why I do this is because you actually lose out on a little bit of damage if you do multi-weap these together, uh, because you'd have to use the same augments that you would on your units to be able to apply to both of the potency types that you're using. So on these units, you'll be using a dual soul and an Ultra Creta, Mastery 4, an Exploit, which is like the elemental exploit. So it has to be facing a certain type of enemy, which is another kind of niche for these hybrid builds, and then a doable Giga capsule. So what I mean by these doable solar or doable Giga capsules is something they actually implemented with Kavaris. So as shown here, these Agli Souls, Euphroi Souls, or Thali Souls, which you combine different types of souls together in the augment exchange shop or the item lab to make these, you know, doable uh, souls, which can also be done for the Giga capsules, Gigas Agli, Gigas Euphroy, and Gigas Valley. 
So they give you those two types just like that. But as you can already see here, you're combining two of these capsules together, while with a one potency build, you'd just be using one. So these can be like almost double as expensive. But moving back to the dual potency page, uh, as you can see here, it is 217 damage with uh, this non multi wep uh, build. But if you do want to still multi wep uh, this is what it would look like. You would lose like around three damage. So it isn't that huge, but if you wanted to maximize, you would do it separately this way. But you might be able to find more utility if you do a multi-weapon. But this also is included with the main weapon. So like with hybrid builds, the only real way you can do main weapon for both weapons is if you play Braver or Bouncer, where they have two different weapon types in their class. But if you're using, you know, a main weapon and a subclass weapon, this is what it would look like between the two. So here is the main class, and then here is the subclass. You can see here it is almost another 20 damage difference, which is pretty huge. So as you can tell from this, uh, Braver and Bouncer make way better use of these dual potency builds since they keep it within their main class. But you might be able to find, you know, enough justification for certain uh, weapons for their utility. Um, things such as like jet boots or a lot of the fighter weapons, those can be pretty good, even though they could be subclass weapons. But comparing the numbers one more time, uh, the dual build is 217, as long as you're not multi-weaponing. And on the one potency build, it is 226. Uh, but you can actually tell here that the potency is actually lower on the one potency build with 70.9%, while the dual has 73.4%. Uh, the reason why the damage numbers are so different or why this is lower is because of that floor potency. So here on the dual, it is 62.5, while on the one, it is 71.4%. That makes up a lot for the average damage. Now, just for fun though, I want to look at an all potency build using melee, ranged, and tech all at once. So here, with using a main class weapon, uh, you can actually get it to 212.62, which is not too bad for using all potencies. So here on the weapon, this is where you're not multi-weaponing. You use the same exact thing as the one potency, or use the soul or giga three, alt credit three, mastery four, eddy def, death basic. Um, but on your units, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because you're trying to apply it to all three damage types. So here you use the ratty soul three, which gives 2.25% uh, potency. And then you use Alt Secreta, Mastery 4, Exploit again, because that applies to all three as well, just to, against certain elemental weaknesses. And then uh, here on this last slot, you can use the Kavaris Domina, or you can use a Triple Bull. Both work the same, just Kavaris gives the extra PP in exchange for damage resistance. It's just kind of a preference up to you. But as you guys may know, no class has all potencies covered within their class. So looking at a non-main weapon, uh, it goes down to 193 using the same augments and everything. So that is a pretty drastic difference if you look at, say, the one potency on a subclass, so 193 to 205. That is a pretty huge difference. Or if you're just looking at a main class weapon versus, you know, this, the jump goes from 193 to 226, which is almost like a 30 plus difference. But looking at this build, it's kind of funny that this all potency kind of works. I mean, you can get up to 69.6% potency. Uh, your floor can be at 62.5% with the KZR weapon. Um, you can actually just use it in any of the content in the game currently and do just fine. But despite that fact, you are just essentially sacrificing damage just, you know, to make this kind of all potency build. But the only thing that I would probably use this for is if I wanted to try out all the weapons or I just love using all of the weapon types so I can make this generic set and not have to make you know an expensive set for each potency type I can just use this so what do you guys think though are hybrid builds viable in my opinion they definitely are like the damage loss isn't that huge or the amount of utility that you can get from these multiple weapon types I was actually surprised with how close it is even with the all potency builds and how you can make like a generic set with that but yeah this is definitely useful for those that want to cover different weaknesses with certain things especially with the classes like braver and bouncer which can, which can make use of the main class for both of the weapons
But if you guys found this useful or you felt like your brain got bigger with all this information, please leave a like or, you know, subscribe if you have not already. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.